Hi everyone, I'm Meg Smith, and welcome to the fourth installment of our series on reform movements in Kansas. In this video, we will learn about populism and the populist movement of the 1890s. In political science, populism is a type of political movement that aims to appeal to ordinary people who feel that their concerns are ignored by the powerful elite. In this video, when we refer to populism, we are talking about the reform movement that occurred in the late 19th century. The populist movement was in response to the wealth inequality of the Gilded Age, leading to the creation of the People's Party, whose members were called populists. The Gilded Age saw a rise in industrialization, which created a lot of wealth for a select few families. 5% of American families held most of the wealth, while the rest of the country lived below the poverty line. Farmers faced especially hard times. At the end of the Civil War in 1865, improvements in technology created new, advanced farm equipment that cut time and labor costs for farmers. While this development allowed farmers to plant more acres, it had several issues that impacted them. Farmers had to invest in expensive new machinery and often needed loans to purchase them. The high interest rates on these loans caused many farmers to go into debt. The advances in farming technology also meant that farms were producing more food than the market needed, causing food prices to fall. In the late 1800s, Kansas experienced a series of droughts that made it difficult to grow crops. In western Kansas, conditions were so bad that people starved. Over 11,000 Kansas farmers faced foreclosure, leading many people to give up and leave the state. On June 12, 1890, Representatives of the state's farmers met in Topeka to establish a new political party known as the People's Party. The People's Party proposed changes to the country's economic and political structures. These proposed changes included break up monopolies and trust, create an income tax with a sliding scale so that the wealthy paid a higher percentage than the poor, government control of the railroads, telegraph, and telephones, election reforms including the election of U.S. Senators by the people rather than by state legislatures, a process by which the people could create laws known as a referendum, the ability of the people to recall elected officials. Even though they could not vote, women played an important role in the populist movement. Mary Elizabeth Lease was one of the most famous populists in the country. She originally came to Kansas to teach, but soon found herself campaigning for temperance, suffrage, and equal rights. She was a powerful speaker and delivered over 160 speeches during the populist campaign of 1890. In the election of 1890, Kansans elected 92 populist legislators and gained control of the State House of Representatives. Populists also won most of the U.S. congressional seats. One of these populists was Jeremiah Simpson, a rancher from Medicine Lodge, Kansas. His opponent in this race was James Reed Hallowell an attorney for a railroad company. Simpson described his opponent as a prince who wore socks made of silk, suggesting Hallowell was out of touch with most Americans. Hallowell fired back that it was better to have silk socks than none at all. Simpson gained the nickname Sockless Jerry and won the election and a seat in the House of Representatives. At this time, U.S. Senators were selected by state legislatures, not the voters. Having gained control of the Kansas legislature, the populist elected William A. Peffer, a lawyer and newspaper editor, as the first populist U.S. Senator. The 1892 election saw the People's Party take control of the Kansas State Senate, and it appeared to take control of the House of Representatives. Election officials had not counted all the ballots by the time the 1893 legislature assembled, so the populists and the Republicans each claimed to have won the majority. Kansas's governor, Lorenzo Luelling, a populist, gave a speech to the state legislature where he referred to Kansas as the nation's first people's government, suggesting that the People's Party had the majority in the House of Representatives. This comment angered Republicans and led to the legislative war. The legislative war began with the Republicans and the populists establishing separate houses and electing their own officers. The two groups occupied the House chambers at the same time and often shouted over one another. The Populist Governor and Senate declared the Populist House to be the official one, but the Republicans refused to leave. The Populists locked themselves in the House chambers, and the next day the Republicans broke down the doors with a sledgehammer. 
The Republicans remained in the House chambers, where the populists attempted to starve them out by shutting off the heat, electricity, and telephones. The state Supreme Court had to decide which party had the legal majority in the House. Two out of the three Supreme Court justices were Republicans, and the court ruled in favor of a Republican majority. The war ended and the state congressmen returned to normalcy. One of the most vocal critics of the People's Party was William Allen White, a businessman and editor of the Emporia Gazette. He wrote an editorial called What's the Matter with Kansas? White believed that it was wrong to ignore business needs and that the populist movement made Kansas lose people and money. What's the Matter with Kansas was reprinted in Republican newspapers across the country and circulated to as many voters as possible. White later renounced this article and became an advocate for progressive reforms across the country. What's the Matter with Kansas did not help the populist, but other factors ultimately led to the party's decline. Because of the popularity of the populist movement, the Democratic Party began to adopt some of their goals. In the 1896 presidential elections, the People's Party agreed to support the Democratic candidate, William Jennings Bryan. The populists merged with the Democrats, causing the populists to lose their identity and unity. The party rapidly declined and was disbanded in 1908. Thank you for watching. Our next video will cover socialism in Kansas, which grew after the end of the populist party.